In Revelation chapter 13, we read, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. We are told that the final method of exchange will not be with money, but will be done with an assigned mark that is put upon the right hand or the forehead of a person. Now with modern technology, not only do we see this as a potential, it is happening today. It's interesting that in our day and age, there is a technology emerging that Hitler or Stalin or any world dictator would dream of, and that is the electronic mechanisms by which one can control all commerce within a nation or perhaps even the whole world by cashless transactions with barcodes, with implantable chips and what have you. People often wonder, are we really in the last days? I mean, what is this talk about the last days? There are a number of signs that the Bible gives that really identify our generation as the first one that you could say is in the last of the last days this thing is about to wind up. One of them we find in Revelation 13 where the Bible says a man will arise who will control the world. Now you've got to have a lot of technology to control the world and part of what he controls is all banking and commerce. You couldn't have done this in the past. You couldn't have even imagined doing this in the past. And somebody's coming, and he's going to control the world, all banking and all commerce, and we have the technology to do it today, technology that was never even dreamed of in the past. In the future, some companies envision a self-serve supermarket where every item is scanned as you walk through the store. No waiting, except for... Excuse me, sir. The occasional hassle of human interaction. Forgot your receipt. Maureen Maher, CBS News. I'll let leave your purse at home. Soon it may not matter at all because all of that information could be accessed through a chip so small that it fits inside your body. NBC 10's Don Timoney explains. It's called a Vera chip, no bigger than a few grains of rice. It's implanted in your arm. Different implant for the human body. It's a microchip that can be used for identification and to get medical help. No bigger than a grain of rice, this chip is at the center of a growing battle over its benefits and drawbacks. CBS's Bobby Harley has both sides of the story and the first people to get the chip. Freddie wears a beeper-like GPS gadget and was also injected with a Vera chip. Implanting both devices would give him and his family more peace of mind. But privacy advocates have... We need some system for permanently identifying safe people. Most of us are never going to blow anything up, and there's got to be something better than one of these photo IDs, a tattoo somewhere, maybe. The Saudis used an American device to scan the eyes of travelers. I wouldn't mind having something planted permanently in my arm. You see, that's how they've been referred to for years. So backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan. I want to live it backwards like the Zep, whose power is Satan. He will give you, give you 666. Listen carefully. Backwards it says, here's to my sweet Satan. Did you hear that? Listen carefully. It says, I want to live it backwards like the Zep, whose power is Satan. Did you hear that? Then it says he will give you, give you 666. Not much into my albums anymore. So. <laughs> he will give you, give you 666. Big deal. The mark of the beast will come out, people will take it on their right hand or their forehead, and then all of a sudden they'll get grievous sores on their right hand and they'll say, hey, what's going on? It's not working. There's some kind of reaction to this mark. And then before you know it, according to Revelation 14, everybody that takes the mark of the beast will be damned in fire and brimstone, it says, forever. And the smoke of their torment rises up forever and ever. Big deal. It's a big deal in this sense. The people that take the mark of the beast, the people that are rejecting Jesus right now, are not going to make it into God's kingdom. 
And we need to reach people and say, hey, the scriptures say, Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. We need to turn to Him wholeheartedly. Where are you turning at this time? Who are you following? Not to follow Jesus is to follow Satan according to the Word of God. And here's a group of neurons right here. And at the University of Southern California, Theodore Berger has shown that brain cells called neurons can grow onto microchips and communicate with them. The capability exists for building computer chips that act just like nerve cells. And we're developing the capability for interfacing those computer chips with the brain. And Ray Kurzweil sees a day when microscopic computers will make all kinds of learning as easy as downloading. You would be able to do things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Is it possible that you could download information into one of these chips? And stop me if, I'm, if this is silly. Um, and give somebody instant knowledge. It's not... It's not in the 1960s, Professor Jose Delgado took a normally hostile bull and implanted electrodes into its brain. Electrodes that could be activated by a radio transmitter. His objective was to see if stimulation of the bull's midbrain could short-circuit the rage signals, stopping the bull before it reached the matador. After the bull had recovered from the implantation and in mid-charge, the button was pressed. The bull's aggression ceased and the bull's aggression ceased instantly. A clearer experiment was performed with cats. In this classic example, the hypothalamus, the rhythm maker, was implanted with electrodes. Could it be responsible not just for rhythms, but also for rage? The switch is turned. Then the switch is turned off. So indeed, the hypothalamus does control certain types of aggression. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. 